Yo, what up guys, I'm Sammy and welcome back to the Soul Brothers channel and today I'm going to be reviewing the Leaning Speed 6 Premium. Lace got stuck there a little bit. So this shoe is going for 115 bucks, which is you know, like pretty cheap and especially for the material and tech that you get, I feel like it is already a very good deal. And if you guys do want to cop, I'll leave a link in the description box. This shoe was from Famuji and this shoe is basically uh, worn by CJ McCollum. He wears this shoe and he wears the UI 13 Premium. He like kind of uh, switches it up. So this is kind of like CJ McCollum's shoe, but not really. It's not a signature shoe. But anyways, let's get it started off with the traction. So for the traction, in this colorway, it's a solid yellow outsole. And you have an interesting pattern. It kind of reminds me of like the Harden Volume 4 or the Harden Volume 1 traction pattern. And there was this little texture on the actual rubber. And when I first started playing in this shoe, it was so bad. Like it wasn't sticking, it was sliding around a lot. So I was like, oh, what the heck is wrong with this? So I broke it in, I played with it outdoors, and I was thinking maybe it was kind of like the Kyrie 4 where if you wore off that texture, it got really, really good. And that was the case for this exact shoe as well. So uh, you, you see this texture, you're gonna have to like wear it out and you're gonna have to take it off before it gets good because it slides around a lot. If you're gonna play with these outdoors, you should be fine because it's a really hard and thick rubber. But if you're gonna play on indoor courts, you're gonna need to break it in and once you do break it in though it gets really good actually when you're playing on the clean court it has a nice solid bite not like top tier very very hard stop but it's still a solid stop and uh it does pick up dust as well it picks up dust pretty damn fast but it's a really light wipe but just keep in mind you're gonna need to wipe really frequently so yeah it wasn't like it wasn't that bad you know once i broke it in i, I could deal with it and it was actually really really good and also it was very quiet it had absolutely no squeak at first but once i broke it in it actually started to squeak a little bit it turned from a disappointment to an actually pretty good traction pattern Uh, moving on to the heel to toe transition, it's pretty smooth. They did cage it up a little bit. The rubber does come up here and on the heel, so it allows for a little bit less compression in the actual cushion. But you know, there's a nice curve shape here in the heel, so it doesn't feel clunky or anything. The forefoot is pretty damn flexible, and you have a nice curve shape here. So heel to toe transition, very smooth. As far as the cushion goes, I thought it was gonna be a little bit nicer, but it's mostly stiff. So they're using a dual blend of light foam and cloud foam from leaning. So light foam is pretty much a very, very responsive and pretty stiff cushion, and cloud is very soft. It might actually reminds me of the cloud foam from Adidas. And the cloud foam is right underneath your foot, and I believe it's really thick in the heel, and then they thin it out a lot in the forefoot. So you can actually feel the cloud cushion underneath your foot. It's plush, it's soft, but it's not like super soft. You just feel just a tiny bit of plushness. And then this light foam, you don't really feel anything at all. So from this cushion, it's mostly responsive. I would say impact protection is pretty good. You know, I, I feel like if it was a different type of foam, maybe like Phylon, or AVA, or you know, it's like similar to the Kyrie fly traps, then it would be a lot worse. Not a lot of compression and not a lot of bounce from it. So I would say mostly this cushion is meant for, you know, people that don't really want a lot from their cushion. So for me, cushion setup was okay. I mean, I can deal with it, but don't expect anything really crazy crazy or really nice from this cushion setup. And as far as the insole goes, it leaning does a good job. I would say it's a little bit thicker and a little bit softer than a, a regular Orsolite insole. So that also improves step and comfort. As far as the materials go, they killed it with this and I don't even know how they you know make this material for only 115 bucks. But it's a full on knit material throughout the entire upper. And then in the midfoot area where the tongue's supposed to be, you have a very stretchy knit upper. And that just kind of like stretches over your foot. And then you just stretch this out, you slide your foot in, it's really, really nice. And then the heel area, you have a very big and nice Achilles pillow. So for the materials, very, very nice. You know, it's soft, it's not too thick or anything. I wouldn't say it's the thinnest material I've ever seen. And then at first it's a little stiff, but you know, once you break it in, it doesn't take too long to break in. It gets really soft. It feels great on foot, very comfortable, but also really supportive. I feel like they ha they put like an underlaying material. Yeah, they definitely put an underlaying material, which they do glue, but it doesn't feel like really stiff like the Kobe 9s did. You know, I feel like they did a really good job with the materials. As far as the fit goes though, the fit wasn't very good for me. It runs long and it runs a, a little roomy. And knit materials do stretch out, you know, like any type of knit, 
when, and once you break it in, you play in it for a while, it actually gets a lot roomier. So uh, the, the fit actually got worse as I broke it in. If you have a wide foot, I would suggest going either true to size or maybe even up half a size. If you have a normal size foot, go down half a size. And if you have a narrow foot, probably go down half a size as well. Uh, but just expect it to be a little bit roomy. And that's one thing that I think they kind of did wrong with the shoe is the fit. You know, cause you can get away with making the fit tight because it does stretch out and it gives you a little bit of uh, room for error. But uh, you know, if you just start out with a very roomy and wide fit, then uh, it'll never be a really nice fit for most people. So uh, I wish the fit was a little bit better. And as far as the laces go, you have a rope lace and uh, you have another type of lacing system. So it starts in the midfoot area and kind of wraps around here into the ankle area. And you would think that once you do tighten the laces, it pulls on this rope lace and then tightens here in the ankle area, which kind of gives you better heel lockdown. But that's not the case because the laces already go through an eyelid. It's kind of like a fly wire. So once you tighten it, this actual red or blue rope lace is a little too loose to actually tighten anything. So it's kind of like a gimmick. I mean, you can take the laces out of these eyelets and then make the lace go through these actual side laces. And that does kind of work and actually works pretty well. So if you want, you can take it out and then just put it through these laces if you want. As far as support and lockdown goes, support and lockdown was very good. Uh, here on the lateral side in the midfoot area, you do have this plastic caging for lateral support and it also turns into a midfoot shank which you know, helps with torsional support. And uh, I guess this leaning logo here in the forefoot kind of reinforces this nib material, but this nib material in the first place is actually very supportive. Like it doesn't stretch a lot if you put a lot of force on it. You know, it's a pretty supportive and sturdy material, but over time it does stretch out is what I'm trying to say. So lateral support was very good. And as far as lateral stability goes, you have a very low wide base. I mean, you don't really have an outrigger, but it's a, you know, it protrudes out a lot. Uh, so support and lockdown was actually pretty nice. One thing that I didn't like about this decoupled outsole is that, you know, for me, well, like when I'm walking and jogging, I can feel this midfoot part kind of collapse. You know what I'm saying? So it kind of goes like this. And it's not something where it's like, it's a deal breaker, but it's, it's kind of annoying. And, but it's just kind of something that I don't like to feel in, in my shoes. So I would have liked it if they didn't decouple it or they just made this entire out to one piece. All right, moving on to the weight. This shoe is 13.79 ounces. Let's check the other side. 13.62 so uh, it's a little bit heavier than average but it's not super heavy but it's a uh, it, it's slightly bulky or, or like slightly bulkier than I would prefer like the overall upper is like kind of thick but on there it's a pretty responsive shoe and you feel pretty quick and light on your feet when you're playing in it and I would say it's the most responsive shoe but uh, it's also definitely something that's not like very very slow or laggy and as far as ventilation goes, ventilation is not very good. This knit material is pretty thick. Like think of it like in an extra sweater on your foot. So uh, ventilation, not very good. It's a pretty warm shoe. As far as durability goes, durability seems really good. You know, uh, these Chinese companies are making very, very durable shoes. I mean, the rubber outsole seems very good. And this knit material seems very thick and it seems like it's gonna uh, last a while. So durability seems very good. As far as step and comfort goes, it's an overall very comfortable shoe. Like I really like the upper, it feels great on foot. The cushion isn't super comfortable though, but I would say it's, it's a lot more comfortable than like a really stiff cushion, like Converse and Vans. But other than that, uh, it's not a very special cushion setup or it's not very soft. So uh, for casual use, it's, it's pretty comfortable. Moving on to the aesthetics. The aesthetics on this shoe are incredible. Like they, the designers killed it with this aesthetic. And this colorway is really cool where they mix and match this red and blue color uh, throughout the entire shoe. Tell us what you guys think of the aesthetics down in the comment section below. But wrapping things up, I mean for 115 bucks, uh, you're getting a very, very premium shoe. Like comparing it to uh, like every other company, like if uh, like Adidas or Nike were to price this shoe, it would probably be at least 150 bucks. So uh, shout out to Leaning for making the shoe really cheap. As far as performance goes though, I mean, it's okay. Uh, I didn't mind it. It's definitely not a shoe that I'll keep in my rotation a lot. Maybe sometimes, but like I said, like the cushion didn't blow me away. The traction wasn't like top tier. I mean, it was okay, but also fit wasn't great for me either. So it's a pretty good, solid, all-around performer, uh, but I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites or I don't think it's like top tier. So yeah, that's the Speed 6 Premium by Leaning. Again, if you guys want to cop, I'll leave links below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.